Now we're going to move on to our uh, move on to filling in the chord boxes. So naming the chords or identifying them. Right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to mark in our cadence points. So where are the cadence points normally? They're after every four bars. So we count one, two, three, four. Now this piece has no upbeat. So we don't, we don't need to worry about that. We start with bar one here. This is bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four. Now normally the cadence points are after four bars. There might be a rest or a long note to identify a cadence point. So this is a minimum, so this is a long note. So this might be identifying a cadence point. And you see here we have chord four done for us going to chord five. And you'll notice that that is a cadence four to five, it's an imperfect cadence. So we draw a cadence point here. This is our, our phrase mark. Okay, phrase mark here. Um, one, two, three, four, possibly. This is our cadence point as well because we have a long note and it's after another four bars. So this is possibly our cadence point. So I'm going to write a phrase mark. You'll notice I am using pencil. You have to use pencil because we are going to be rubbing things out, going back and forth. Okay, next phrase mark, one, two, three, four, four bars. It might be here, we don't know, we will have to see. I will do it in pencil and then we'll see what happens. And then here at the end, we'll write a uh, phrase mark as well at the end. And normally we try, we finish with a perfect cadence or a plagal cadence. So I like to write here on my notes, my cadences. So the options we have for our cadences. So at our cadence points, so we have imperfect, that's any chord going to five, and I should have crossed off, you know you're not using three and you're not using seven, okay, not using three and not using seven. Now, the next cadence point, the next cadence we could use these are unfinished ones, so this is an interrupted cadence. You should know this one as well. An interrupted cadence is five point six. And then you have your plagal, which you'll use at the end possibly, which is four going to one. I should have a rubber with me now. Four going to one minor key and perfect at the end. Possibly five going to one. Now, because we're in a minor key, this is very important now. You are not allowed to use chord two in a minor key. This is chord two, you're not allowed to use it. However, you are allowed to use the inversion of chord two. So, when you're in a minor key, will you please label chord two, two, B. So you're going to invert the chord. Inverting the chord just means that you're going to put the F, the third of the chord, in the bass. So you're going to call it 2B and when you come to the bass clef, F goes in the bass clef. Okay? That's all it means. Alright? So you're going to be putting F in the bass clef and you're calling the chord 2B. 2B. Okay? That's all. Now, you can invert all the other chords, except chord six, we're not going to invert, but you can invert them. Uh, but for chord two, you're not gonna use chord two, you're only gonna use chord two B. If you are using chord two B, a good progression is chord two going to chord five, okay? Chord two going to chord five. Now, so there are cadence points, imperfect, interrupted, plagal, and perfect. All right, so I was marking in our cadence points there. This cadence is done for you already. All right, we're going to go to the end straight away and see what cadence works here. So we're in the key of C minor and our last note is C. So the only option here, because it's the end of the piece, is chord one. And I'm just going to write that option outside. You always write the options outside. Now, what we're looking for here, the chord before it, would be a plagal chord a play, plagal cadence or a perfect cadence. So we're either looking for chord four or chord five. So we look at the note directly underneath the chord box. Directly underneath, that's a B. I know that because middle C is on the line, the note below it is a B natural. So a B natural and a D, they're the two notes. Now because they're jumping, they're leaping, they're both important. So a chord that has B and D in it. So I go back to my chord box and I look for 
a chord that has B and D in it. Now I know I want to use four or I want to use five and chord five has B and D in it. So I'm going to go with chord five. All right. So that is a perfect cadence. So I know that is a cadence point there, a perfect cadence, finishing on a perfect cadence. Right, let's go back up to this cadence point here. So here I maybe want an interrupted or an imperfect cadence. So I have the notes G and B natural. Now again, they're both leaping. So that means they're both important. The note directly under the, under the chord box is a G. So what uh, chord has G and B in it? I have a chord five has G and B in it. And I forgot to write chord five, seven. You are allowed to use five, seven in a minor key. So I add in my seventh G, A, so count G, A, B, C, D, E, F. That's the seventh, or just jump up the third again up there. So you have your F now. So I'm looking for a cadence and I said chord five has G and B in it. And that's the only one, okay. All right, now the chords before it then, we have the notes F, we have the notes F and A. So what chord has F and A in it? Our two options for F and A, we have A flat, sorry. We have uh, 2B, so that's an inverted chord, or we have chord four. So there are options. We'll write both of those in and we'll see which we'll use. So we have chord four or 2B. Remember, we're not allowed to use two in a minor key, okay? 2B. Right, now let's go up to this cadence point here. We have the note C. So we're, we either want to use an imperfect or an interrupted cadence. So the note C, it is, the note C is in chord six. And the note C is in chord one and it's in chord four. Now, we know we want a cadence point here and we're hoping it's a cadence point. So our best option would be chord six if we can use five before it and make it an interrupted cadence. So chord five, now we have the notes G. F is probably a passing note because it's walking down. And then we have E, and then we have D is probably a passing note because it's walking down. So now we have a chord that has G and E in it. So we have the options of chord one. Now, I'm just looking at it here, and even though I crossed out F, I'm looking at it again, G, F, and D. So we have G, F, and D. Those are three notes of chord five, seven. So maybe that's a possibility as well. Okay, I'm not going to write it in yet. Right, so those are options for our cadence. Now, I'm looking here and these ones are definite, so I'm going to fill these ones in straight away, okay? I'm not going to change my mind about this. Mm -hmm. So this is chord one here, and this is chord five. Now, chord five. Here, this one, I don't know yet. I haven't decided, and this one I haven't decided yet, so I'm going to wait. Now, let's go back to the beginning. Now, we're at the beginning of our phrase, we have the note C jumping to G, so C and G are important. Now, F is probably a pass note because it's walking, and down to E, a long note important, and E is repeated. So we're looking for a chord that has C, G, and E in it. So C, G, and E is chord one, and that's a good chord to start the beginning of our phrase on, and there's no other chord that has C, G, and E in it. So C, our C chord, C minor chord, is going to be going in there. And it's a lower case because we're in a minor key, so make sure you have a very clear lower case. Now, next chord box, uh, next uh, bar, we have the note F, walking to E, probably a passing note, then we have F again, walking to G, probably a passing note, and then we have A. So we have F, A, and back to F again. So F, A, what chord has F and A in it? There are two options. We have chord two, but we're only allowed to use chord two B in a minor key, so chord two B, or chord four. So we'll write those options, chord four, or chord 2B. There are options. We'll leave the options there for a minute. Now, next bar, we have the notes D and F. So if you're looking at your chord box, which you have in front of you, D and F, the options are 2B or D and F chord 5, 7. Okay? 
They're the only options. Next one, we're on to E and C. So a chord that has E and C in it, we have chord one or chord six. All right, and we'll write our options in afterwards. We'll look at our progression. Okay, we'll continue filling them in. So our options here now, we have the note F. So F is in chord 2B and it's in chord 4 or 5, 7. So chord 2B or chord 4 or chord 5, 7. Mm, if it's, yeah, if it's necessary. Now the next one, we have the note F. E might be a passing note. Then we have the note D and then we have the note C. So we're looking for a chord that has F and D in it. So again, we have 5, 7 or 2B again. Now, let's keep going. We have the note D here. So in the note, uh, which chord has a note D? So we have 5, 7 or 2B. Now let's keep walking along. We have the note D directly underneath the chord box. Then we're walking down to C. Then we have a B natural and jumping back to D. So you notice when they're walking, I tend to think they're passing notes and they're not part of the harmony. So the, the strong harmony notes here are D, B natural and D. So the chord that has D and B natural is chord five. And there doesn't seem to be any other option. So I'm going to go with chord five there. Now, next uh, bar, we have the note C, a long C. So the options for that is C minor, that has C in it, or chord four or chord six. So one, four, or six, one, or four, or six. Now, next uh, box, we have the note C. Then probably walking, so it's probably a passing note, not so important. Then A, probably an important harmony note, and then G is a passing note. So we have C and A. So what chord box has C and A in it? We have chord four or chord six. There are options, yeah. Chord four or chord six. Okay, now I'm going to keep going. So now I'm at the beginning of our last phrase and we have the note C, E, G. And straight away, because it's the beginning of a phrase and we have the note C, E, G jumping like that, I know which chord that is. I don't even need to check my chord box. C, E, G, it's going to be chord one. C, E, G, and then it's walking down. Now we might need to invert this, we'll see what happens um, with our progressions, okay? Right, next thing now, the next chord, the next bar we have is note C, probably a pass note B, is passing because it's walking and then we have A and that G is still part of this chord box so the G here uh, might be a passing note. So we have note C and A. Now the chords that have C and A in it are chord four or chord six so we write our options chord four or chord six. Oh. Now uh, next chord box we have notes F and A. So F and A are in A flat or in chord 2B or chord Four, there are options. Chord 2B or 4. Remember, you're not allowed to use chord 2 in a minor key. You have to use 2B, that's the inversion, which means you put the third note in the bass, which is F in the bass. So we'll look at that when we have the bass stuff. Now, here you have two notes that are jumping, so they're both important. That's a G note. This low note here, I know middle C is on the line, so go backwards in your piano or backwards in your alphabet, and one note before C in the alphabet is B. So we have G and B natural. So the only chord that has G and B natural is chord five. Yeah, there's no other chord that we're allowed to use. So chord five is our only option here. Might be chord five, seven. We'll see how our progressions are going. We'll just leave it at five for now. Now these notes here, we have the note C. D is probably a pass note because it's walking, going up to E and then jumping back to C. So a chord that has C and E in it, you have the chord one or chord six. There are options C and E flat chord one or chord six. And finally, this one here, we have the note D direct down underneath the chord box and then C. So D is probably important and C is probably walking, it's a passing note. Um, so we have the note D. So our options for the note D, we have two B or five seven. Two 
2B or 5, sorry, 2B or 5. Now, remember, you cannot have the same chord in succession. That means you can't have chord 1 followed by chord 1. You cannot have the same chord together. However, you can have chord 1 and an inversion of chord 1. Or you can have 5 and 5, 7, okay? Right. Um, now, we need to look at our progressions and see which ones will fit in best. So just some rules before we start. Um, 2B going to 5 is a good progression. 5 is allowed go to 5, 7, but cannot go the other way around, okay? So 5 can go to 5, 7, but the reverse is unacceptable. Um, cadence progressions are good, okay? So using uh, your primary chords are good, 1, 4, and 5. All right, okay. 